Okay, so hello everyone. I'm uh, Davide and I'm, I will be the last presentation of the morning. I'll try to keep it short so we can jump right on the buffet. Uh, my talk is about uh, not the future of the C++ as we heard till now, but more on the present, especially on uh, C++ 17. And uh, it will be on vectors, so not the kind of vectors that you find uh, in the standard library, but uh, the vectors uh, that we all learned at school, so the pointy arrow that it's uh, so dear to all the video game programmers. Why did I choose vector to talk about the new features of C++17? First of all, because vectors have a static size, so I will not have to worry about uh, weird memory allocation, move operation, and other weird stuff of the language that... Uh, doesn't concern this presentation. Second point, uh, as I said, that they doesn't require any special move semantic because they have trivial type, trivial constructors, uh, and so on. They're widely used, so we all know what we're talking about. They have well-defined operators, so we will not say something fancy, something new, something uh, revolutionary. We will stick to the literature. And uh, we can find countless implementation, which will make our, my work easier because they have a lot of sources to copy from to look smarter. Let's start from the basics. For vectors, we want uh, these stuff. So static arrays of, uh, uh, of standard types to behave just like standard types where we try to use them uh, in this fashion. So, our first needs uh, is to let her uh, to understand the compiler what he has to write. So, in our case, uh, this thing. Let's start breaking it down. The first things that we need to understand is what type uh, we want to get. In the case of the multiplication, uh, what we need to get uh, can be achieved with decal type uh, using the members that we're trying to multiply. The rest can be done using uh, the new C++17 feature that are full expression. We will see them more in details uh, soon. So, we want to multiply, so let's start by writing the multiply function. What you're gonna get are the two arrays that we need to multiply, and uh, since uh, indices doesn't cancel free, we need an index sequence with the indexes that we need to multiply. In our case, 0, 1, and 2. We will deduce the return type uh, as before, so using decal type uh, over the multiplication of our members, and the results will be the size of uh, our two arrays. What's bad with this design? The bad thing is that uh, nothing ensures us that uh, indices are of the size of our two input arrays, and uh, nothing assures that our input arrays are of the same size. So, our function works fine as long as we respect the interface, but uh, we need uh, uh, a stronger function declaration that will prevent us from writing bad code that will produce uh, un in understandable errors. C++ offers us classes, so let's use them. Put uh, our data inside the class vector that will contain our index list and will ensure us that when we will use it in our multiply function, we will have two vectors of two different types, but that's fine. But they will strictly be of the same size and they will have the same indices. Indices will be produced by the making the sequence list, so we'll be correcting this is 0, 1, 2, and so forth, and applying the, applying the free dot syntax, we can unroll them and obtain this result. We want the operator star to work with them, so once we have our multiply function, we use it inside our operator star, that is defined as follows. We do need the decal type at the end because it will act as finite for our multiply function, so that uh, we will not accept any kind uh, of type uh, for the multiply, but only the kind of types that will work for the multiply, which are, as we can see before, vectors. 
With these, again, our code uh, works and compiles. We correctly deduce uh, the return types. Uh, we can define our vectors of integers, of floats, uh, and use them correctly. Now, to our vectors, we want to add Switzers. If you don't know what Switzers are, I suggest you to check uh, Valentin Galea presentation uh, in the 2019 uh, C++ Con. They are explaining very well. Uh, he will uh, briefly say that uh, there are special types uh, inside the union in our vector. And uh, the size, uh, the inner size of this Switzler is the same size of our data. So that Switzler 0, 0, is uh, of size 3. The two zeros will say that when we use it, it will produce uh, a vector of size 2, because we have two indexes, and we'll use twice uh, the first element, because it's 0, 0. So we will get a vector 2 that is xx. Same for xy, xz, and any other type. What does this mean? This means that uh, now we don't have only to accept vectors in our methods, but also Switzers. So this multiply doesn't work anymore because we added Switzers. We want, them, we want it to work, so we need to add a decay step keeping uh, our safeness uh, with the sphenae that we produce correct errors. This is a possible decay implementation. We define uh, our traits to detect uh, if a type is a vector, and it is a vector if it is a, is a vector or is a Switzer representing a vector. What's interesting is not the, the, um, the traits. Uh, what's interesting is the if constructs used uh, in the decay function. Each concept is something that uh, C17 brings. And uh, an, inter an interesting thing is that this is a function that, in some cases, has return statements that returns different types. So when the t is a Switzler, the first return will return a vector, the second return will return a Switzler. This isn't a problem because if constructs handle that. So this is something that you can keep in mind uh, when using uh, if constexp. And by the way, remove CVREF uh, will only come with C17 because reasons we still need to implement it by our own. So we need to implement our Switzer support. Uh, now we have the, the key function. So we add a new multiply function that will use the, the old multiply function, adding the decay step. Again, the decal type will ensure that uh, this multiply function exists only if the decay will produce vectors that will be compatible uh, with uh, our original multiply function. With this, we don't have to touch our operator star because everything will be handled by the multiply. The operator star, if you remember, was already spinning on the multiply compatibility with the arguments. So this overload will make it work without any other adjustment. Let's see the in action. We can have our vector. We can use Switzlers. We can operate between Switzlers. The return type is the, the deals correctly. So everything was fine until now. Let's go on with what we need. Uh, cool stuff that we can add to our vector type is the possibility to have SIMD-ish operation. What's happening inside this PO is not uh, that, uh, for instance, in the second row, vector 3f is not multiplied by himself. What we got is that uh, in the first row, the first member of vector 3f is a power to the first element of vector 3, and so on for the second and for the third. In the second row, we have all the element of vector 3f squared. In the first case, we have our pi squared three times and the result put in a vector. And for the fourth row, which uh, may be surprising if you never used Po from the standard library, we have an integer vector to the Po of an integer variable and Po of two integer returns a double. So if you thought so far that we could use uh, the common type traits uh, that STD offers, this is why we cannot because sometimes the common type is not what is correctly returned. In the case of Po, in fact, Po of two integers return a double. 
So common type will tell us uh, the common type between two inches is an integer, but we need a double. So the question now is, how do we get these types? And most importantly, we want this kind of error, not these kind of errors. First step to deduce a return type is to understand the order of the vector that we want to return. So a possible implementation with C++14 would be this one. We create a get order traits where we get our types. We try to see the size and we try to understand between the size of the current element and the size of the remaining elements, which will be the order of our operation. Who thinks this is easily understandable? No one. Cool. We can improve this with uh, C++17, again using uh, the if constructs operator. With the if constructs, we can create uh, our function that uh, will give us the order of the types. And we can use it like this. We check the size of the remaining arguments. Uh, if it's zero, it's just the size uh, of the first type. Uh, and we perform all the others uh, checks, uh, just as they were with the ternary before, but now using uh, a more common syntax, a more understandable syntax that even a newbie in his first day in the, in the company can understand. Now that we have the, the order, we need to deduce the old type of the vector. To deduce the return type of the function, we can use again something new that uh, C17 offers that is invoke result. Invoke result, given a callable and a list of arguments for that callable, uh, will tell us. Uh, which type will be returned when invoking that function. Another little problem, f cannot be po. Who knows why? f cannot be po because uh, po is an overload. So since it is an overload, invoke result doesn't understand which kind of overload of po we are sending to f. So we need to enclose po in a lambda. Once we create this lambda, this lambda is a valid callable object that we can send to f to be deduced in work result. So we are getting some undesired noise here. And when we create the implementation of vec invoke, which will be the one that uh, will uh, simd our operator, it should be something that looks like this. So the first step is the last one, where we get our function that will be the lambda. We create our index sequence based on the order that we deduce. We decay because we need switzers. And we send to the implementation of VEC implementation, of VEC invoke implementation. Then we deduce the return time as seen before. And we use VEC invoke with the index that tells us at which row the vector we want to apply the function. Putting all together, this is how, this is how our uh, pose D will look like. So given a base and an exponent, uh, we use our vec invoke, uh, giving the lambda of pole plus the arguments. It's working, uh, but the errors are still horrible. Because if we try to give uh, a string uh, to the exponent, uh, the compile error will be inside here. And if you get a compiler error, you double click on the error and you end up here, you may not enjoy it. So how can we fix it? Again, with Sfine. But Sfine, this time, is not so simple as well, because uh, inside VEC invoke, we have a lambda. And we cannot decal type uh, something that has a lambda inside it. So we cannot write just arrow decal type uh, and everything that we put uh, below the return. So again, we need. Uh, a bit more of semantic. We need to directly decal type the return type of the function. This time we can use pool because we are sending the arguments so the overload is resolved and we know exactly which overload of pool we are using. We decal type the return type of pool. We create again our vector definition and we obtain this fina on our pool function. Vector definition is just uh, a helper trait that will automatically create our vector type uh, unrolling the index sequence. 
From there, the next step is to add macro to avoid other people to have to write all these horrible uh, traits that, unfortunately, until uh, concept, uh, it's unavoidable. And uh, what it looks like, it's just the same as before. We, just we are just using uh, uh, a variadic arguments list so that we can uh, replace po with function name. And uh, just by replacing po with function name, uh, you can apply this to any other standard math function that you can find in the standard library. The last things that we want to enable for our vectors are construction and conversions. For construction and conversion, there isn't much that uh, the standard offers us. Uh, we will see something briefly, but uh, there, just as before. What we need for our vectors, we need them to be copy constructable, so OK. We need them to be copy constructable for a Switzer type. And we need uh, to be able to composite construct them from uh, lower size vectors. So in the third line, you can see that I construct uh, a vector of three ints from one int and a vector of two integers. And uh, to implicit conversions, we need a uh, vector free double uh, to be assignable from a vector free float uh, and vice versa. And what we want here is to still receive the warning uh, of uh, narrowing conversion if it happens. So we don't want to create uh, a constructor that uh, hides from us the fact that we are narrowly converting something. How can we do that? We define a variadic constructor for vectors. That uh, constructor is enabled only if the size, the total size of the argument matches the size of the vector. And then uh, we need uh, an inner construct function that takes an index uh, and uses uh, all, the all the size of the argument that we pass uh, to fill uh, the size of our vector. Here again, uh, we are using folding expression. How does construct work? It's quite simple. Uh, if it's a scalar value, we just uh, set it to the index uh, and go to the next index. Uh, if it's a vector, we unroll the vector and apply to our indexes. Note that uh, since we have the decay step uh, in the constructor, we, again, don't have to care about Switzerland at this lower level. And we can define the equality operator as simply as this, because uh, when const vector type uh, is received, uh, if we are receiving a Switzerler, our constructor will allow to have an implicit construction from the Switzerler to the vector type. And so this operator equal will work just fine, even if we enable or disable uh, the support to Switzerlers. So what we got so far? We got that um, C17s offer us two, uh, two features that are if const expert and uh, folding expression that uh, may result quite useful when you have to construct this kind of libraries when you need to handle static sizes where you can unroll indexes. And uh, if const expert make, uh, makes us much easier the process of understanding and uh, operating some types because we can uh, return different types uh, in the same function, and it will work. So if you have to deduce a type, and you think that it's easy to write an if construct function that does it, you create the function that does that, and then you decal type the result of the function. This will make much easier the work to operate with types until we reach the point where we have concepts available. That's all. If you have uh, any question, otherwise. Uh... Yes? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe you could be very nice. And um, just uh, a curiosity. Do you think about expanding the vector?
vectors to the matrices used in transforming the vectors? Yes, of course, uh, you can, uh, of course you can expand vectors to matrices. Actually, uh, Switzerlers, uh, as presented from Valentin Galea, are uh, uh, very useful for that because uh, once you have defined your matrix uh, as uh, an array of uh, your scalar types, you can use Whistler to either extract uh, sub-vectors from it uh, or sub-matrices. So in the case where you create your transform matrix uh, 4 times 4, you with Whistler can uh, extract the 3 by 3 matrix, uh, which usually is a pain, as easy as uh, listing the indexes that belongs to the 3 by 3 matrix. And then, uh, yes, with indexes, you can uh, do a lot of cool stuff uh, between uh, vectors and matrices because uh, when you have indexes uh, at compile time, uh, it's uh, much easier to write uh, math function. So. And of course, everything can be turned cross stack. I didn't do that, but yes, everything can be turned cross stack. Any other question? Okay, so uh, good lunch and uh, enjoy.